What is you ask for size? What you ask for location? Third, you ask for patient's BMI. Any year, madam wants to know intraoperative. Did you ask what other situation would happen intraoperatively, which could make this uh, operation give you the index? Is, oh, the, the not a straightforward one, difficult. Yeah. Blood transfusion. Very good. Very good. If there was blood transfusion, right? Anything else? Normally, how long does the hysterectomy take in college and an experienced gynecologist? Duration of surgery. Ah, duration of surgery. This is a fibroid. It has taken me five hours. Something has gone wrong, boss. Ah, something has happened here. Ah. So, these are, the, these are common questions. You are not uh, asking any rocket science questions. They are simple ones. These operations, this was done, this was done. All this will tell you as to was there a reason for this lady to have got a baby? It may be UVF, it may be BBF, whatever it is, maybe all, both. Uh, so, right. So, then what is it? Yeah, you so like to know at what point it occurred also. Yeah. Huh? What is the okay. usual history in BBF? Usual history in BBF? No, 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 no. Usual history in the BBF. What happens? It has not been recognized at the time of operation. That's what it has not been recognized. Then what happens next? Once the cerebral visitor uh, and, uh, and the patient starts working, uh, the she will be leaking from the vagina. So right. So what? When do they remove the catheter? In the course of their five or three. Uh, they remove forty-eight hours. Sometimes they remove the catheter. Is it some? Uh, so if they start leaking following removal of the catheter. Any other situation? Any other type? Any other time when they will leak? What's the other history? But uh, while boiling, the fetal is the throat and the throat. Urine through vagina. Urine through vagina is a different category. We will leave that out for the moment. Let us concentrate on the other two. Uh, or when they are standing. Uh, are the are no, no, no. Okay. What's the other history in this scenario? One is you remove the catheter on the second day and the patient starts to leak. Second day, third or fourth day, starting to leak urine in the ward itself. What's the other scenario? Delay. Huh? Delay. Delay means what? So what happens with the delay? What is the reason for delay? It may the ischemia which has taken place and the chronic erosion of the what is it that causes that problem, usually? Which are the type of fish delay which occur at that time? Patient has been discharged. Say third day, fourth day, on the lap and on second day they discharge. Patient has gone home. And after seven days, rings up the doctor, gynecologist, who did the operation. Urine is leaking, I am having control. Doesn't matter, it becomes moderate is the next question on the phone, answer on the phone. Take some antibiotic. Then again that the patient will come running for the, after two days. The leaking is not continuing. Okay, go and see urologist. That is the scenario, only stay suddenly. Like that. No, well, if it's a delayed presentation, it can either be a urotrovaginal or it can still be a VVF. It takes that much time for necrosis to set in. It depends on the degree of injury, you know. If there is just a partial occlusion in the ureter, that area will slough, it will take a little while, seven days. That could still start leaking. If there is a hematoma between the bladder and the, at the time the dissection was difficult, there was a, between the posterior wall of the bladder and the remnant uterus, the vagina with vault is disclosed, there is bleeding, the hematoma, that gets infected and that bursts through the bladder because that area is Efficient. When you dissect out the uterus, ship the, uh, get the cervix out, you push the bladder anteriorly. So at that time, if it's an adherent fibroid or if it's a difficult case, you tend to shave off the bladder muscle. And you may not recognize it sometimes. And then you get a hematoma when bladder. You see when you open the bladder, how it bleeds. No? It's a muscle, right? So those will bleed and then it gets arrested, you ignore it. That actually is the same area of weakness. So that bursts through the bladder and later on after 7 days, 8 days, you get it. 
you can get it immediately or you can get it much later. Anything is possible. Yeah, suppose Arish, you are doing, uh, means the uh, gynecologist is doing the closure and there is urine seen in the field. They call you to see. What are the steps to do? Urine is well enough.
The mistake we make is to assume that it is leaking only from point A. It may be leaking at point A, B, C, anywhere it could be. So depending on the difficulty of the operation, where do you think the earlier talking to them, did you have any difficulty? Where was that difficulty? They may say they may have difficulty at the level of the ligaments when they were ligating the pedicle. They may have difficulty when they were dissecting the cervix out. Wherever there was difficulty, that is where there is action. Okay? So you find out while you are talking to them, where was the difficulty? Then you say, okay. Maybe ureter, it can be bladder. It could be that left ureter, right ureter, both ureters also. The mistake we make is to assume everything is only on one side. It can be from the other side. So, if you want to find out if it's ureter injury, you want to do I am telling you, you are in the best center in the world. What contrast? You take the page to theatre, to X-ray department. Huh? Anti-grade puncture. Where? Well, you are doing this operation here, man. Farin and that too, they will make a small farin seal bikini incision, all the gynecology. Small, very incision. Huh? Please, this question has... How many times this please, has been discussed here? <laughs> Question, but I can tell you to say anti-grade puncture, you are never attended with that. <laughs> <laughs> this is the way uh, students have done. Have you heard of Indigo Kami? <laughs> huh? You have heard of Indigo Kami? Huh? I told you you are in the best center in the world in the United States. Huh? Where are you? you give a dye which will be excreted by the kidney. So that you know whether it's leaking from the ureter at all or not, the first thing. Now if you don't have that indigo carmine, what do you do? That's the next question, it's bound to be asked by the examiner. You will go and say indigo carmine. Then he'll ask you the next question. Is indigo carmine, have you used it? No sir. Why? Have you got it? No sir. Now what will you do? What will you do? This is the question that is asked in the exam. What will you do? All, every examiner asks what will you do? I tell you, the exams are not high funda at all. Not at all high funda. It's a down to earth clinical medicine. You pass your theory, you attend, if you attended the classes or if you see patients in the hospital regularly in the OPD, you have no difficulty in passing the exam. They want to know what you will do. Are you, when you go out to town, are you the same neurologist or you chumma cut everybody that comes? Are you thinking rationally or are you thinking straight? That's all. So you want to find out whether there is leakage here, leakage there, where is it coming from, all that. You don't have indigo coming, what do you do? You don't have indigo everybody else aside. Why? Because the blame will be on you ultimately. I have done the bloody selective. I called the urologist to stop the leak. That fellow did something and went there. You will get screwed. Remember this, you will get screwed. So, you have to push everybody else aside in the theatre. Tell them to stand aside. And you go. You are the chief tester. What will you do? If you want to retrograde, you will put the patient lithotomy. Put the patient lithotomy. That's an order. You have to be that way. You can't be different. So you have to say, I want the patient they thought to me. Okay, where is the sister's scope? Have you got a sister's scope? Get the sister's scope. Wait. Tell the anesthetist, wait. I want to do RGP. I want to do this. So you have to be different. Now by the time they go and get the sister's scope, they don't have sister's scope. Some peripheral hospital guy, where do they have sister's scope? This is what's happening in our country. Hysterectomy is done, diaper does it everywhere, no? They will call you, you there. Yeah. Unless you carry your sister's scope in your car like many urologists. So what do you do? What will 
you do? By the time the sister scope is, is, is saying, you can do something else instead of standing and twiddling your thumbs. You scrubbed up. Can you tell the anesthetist to do something? Harish, you know the answer. I want you to speak confidently and boldly. Don't be diffident, man. Your answer is right. I pick up and say boldly, I will give this, I will give that. I told you, you're the general man. You have to control the system there. You have to go and control it. Tell the said to give license. Then you see there what is happening, where the urine leak is from, flooding. If it floods definitely on one side, you know, that's where it is. Huh? Where do you think the injury is likely to occur in the urethra? Anywhere else? Where else will the injury occur? Near to the? Near to the cervix. Why I want to go near to the cervix. Before you reach the cervix, something else has to happen. Before the uterus is taken out. Cord. Cord. Uterine artery, man. Where is the uterine artery? So many times I showed you, you know, in this BVS and all, when you dissect out, I've shown you the stump of the uterine artery. You see, the stump is there. You will see the ureters. What is that? Just going across. So, the uterine artery is the short artery. The stumpy artery, straight away entering into the uterus. And if you have a large fibroid, that is occupying space. And you go to a small incision, there's a lot of tugging and pushing. There's only one fellow to assist you, maybe a small nurse. This is what is happening. That's how these mistakes happen, man. And so, no retraction there, you try. That already artery will stiff, bleeding will occur, then you put on blind clamp, then you know, it's a story, it's a standard story. Nothing new. That's all madam wants you to answer, that's all. There's nothing in it. It's a very famous question in the exam. All the time they ask all this. So nothing has changed in the last 40 years. Okay, I will give you time to think about it. <laughs> uh, next next time you tell us. Whether you open the bladder, whether you go behind the bladder, whether you do cystoscopy, whether you do RGP, think of all the possible things and what should be the right way. Yes, sir. We'll go ahead. Otherwise, okay. Yeah. So, we are going to. Do you want to know anything more? Yes, sir. Uh, the No, no. Intraoperatively, nothing was identified. Was identified postoperatively. Until the day test. Yeah. She has a leaking of the urine one month after the surgery. Not immediately. Is there any other history which would suggest that this could be UVF, urethral vaginal, or BVF? One month after the discharge, she has got leakage. Is what the history? Is there any other question you will ask which will give you some clue as to whether this was a urethral vagina or a vesicle? Clinical. We are all clinical now. We know what MRI and all that stuff. We are clinical. in between normal. Right. Anything else? Anything else? What, happens what is the consequence of ureteral ligation? Uh, pain. <laughs> what else is the consequence of blockage of urine? Apart from pain? You see so many fellows just block ureters every day. But today also you got one fellow. Yesterday you had one fellow. What is the consequence of block drainage? Clinical. Clinical. Ureter infection, man. Pyloneuritis fever. Suppose the patient says after I went home, three weeks later I had high fever and loin pain. Hmm. So you have to ask that question. 
Sometimes there may be fever, lower abdominal discomfort, no loin pain. Again, fever means there's infection. So that's why there's a delay. All these are reasons for delayed injury. One month afterwards, something must have happened somewhere. So this, all this history does help you in some way to figure out as to whether you would have you might argue and tell me, why are you asking all these stupid questions? I do an MRI, I do even finish with it, man. Why are you wasting my time? Fair enough. Absolutely right. <laughs> why are we doing all this drama? Today nobody is examining the patient, nobody takes history. Send for MRI, send for PET, PET scan, PET, send for this uh, diagnosis. Why are you doing it? Forget it. What do you say? See that? <laughs> nobody is asking all these questions. Why are you wasting time? <laughs> what? Sujata? <laughs> well, do MRI, do IVU, send the patient off. <laughs> okay, sir. Huh? Okay, so oh. you don't want any more history. You want to know the histopathology report of the user? Yes, ma'am. Okay, sir. What happens when uh, the surgery is done? How many months? Uh, Three months. How many Three months. Three months. For three months, neither the patient is at rest nor neither the gynecologist is at rest. So you have to ask what was done in this three months. Yes. So tell me. It's your return. Yes. After uh, four summer when she has been taking for the day, she went to gynecologist to refer to a urologist in the Does it say what is it? Now that you found the defect, there is a leakage of urine. But uh, it says it's complicated with the bladder uh, at the sound. So it is confirming the leak, right? It is confirming that this what this patient is saying is true. He is leaking urine from the vagina. Full stop. Does it indicate to you whether this leakage is from the bladder or is it from the ureter? Is there some way by which clinically you could have some idea? Not in this particular case, but sometimes with some astute observations you can make out. No, no, three so forget the three so just looking. If it is usually in the phonicial area, if it is high in the phonics, it may be ureter. If it is in the midline, it may be bladder. But apart from that, if there is a VVM, if there is a, if there is a VVM, and it is not one of those small valvular types of VVMs, but it is a regular VVM, urine will be seen to be leaking all the time. It requires careful observation. It depends on how careful you want to be with looking at a problem. Oh yeah, we, okay, forget it. If you want to be there, that's a different story altogether. But if you carefully examine, and you will find this urine which is coming from the ureter will not be a continuous leak. It will come as though there is a jet. It will dry and slowly up sometime. It will be It is a large BBF, it will keep leaking all the time. It's just an observation that you have to make clinically, but ultimately, as I said, it makes no difference. You are going to confirm by radiology and everything else that what it is. But it's just clinical science, that's all. You must all listen to Abraham Burgess's lecture on YouTube. 
you know what Abraham Burke is now? Anyway, that's it. He's a very great physician. He has written a lot of books. His first book was my tennis partner and then he has written a couple of other books. He is in the United States. He is one of those guys who, is, who gives very good lectures. You must listen to him speak about clinical medicine. Just in your spare time, listen to him. He is lamenting basically, but whatever it is, it's good to time pass and listen to these fellows. Anyway. So now what you will do? Before that, what you will do? The Thursday class, Mohan has said, no, before any imaging, he was asked for creatinine. Yes. And then, and and then you do culture or not is immaterial. But you must at least know what the serum creatinine is, no? Before you do any contrast business. Yeah, I presume you are using contrast, no? Yes. And then you must know what the creatinine is. Yeah, don't uh, deviate from the normal system. Yes. Go by chemistry, then radiology, and then uh, invasive investigation, like cystoscopy. And don't be in a hurry. Nobody is after you. Yeah. Just uh, take your time and think about the situation and then answer it. Yeah, but now, see, this we can't tell you, keep on telling you. You can't do this mistake or again and again. Everybody does it. Ask the common thing. What do you know if she's a diabetic, she has 400 sugar, then will you take her for cystoscopy or will you send her for a radiology? Nothing. You first control it. So we don't know every patient is different. Ask for normal biochemistry first. Abdominal findings you want to know or you don't want to know? Did they tell us the biopsy? Yeah. What was the biopsy? We'll find out, no, in the meantime. Huh? Histopathology, find out. Why does he ask you, no, histopathy, histopathy? Find out what the biopsy was. Was this for malignancy? Was it for uh, fibroid? What is it? Yeah. They said fibroid. They said? They said so. Okay, so they said so, then it's all right. I did get it, sorry. No, HP they didn't get it. Oh, okay. So now what do you do? Let's assume it's a fibroid. Now what do you do? You have done the creatinine. Ask for blood test. Let's like, know the cystoscopy that we have. Uh, serum creatinine. Let's see the creatinine. Let's not want to know about the Hmm, okay. No, no, you say what you will do, what imaging will you do? Okay, what are the 
this I run the book of identity. So we are going on it with CP, but you want to see it with the label. Tell me of your disadvantages of doing an identity. Number one. Number two? 
After re-implantation, they may not have closed this BBF and the bladder properly. Especially if there was a re-implantation done, that means the injury would have occurred fairly low down. Isn't it? Isn't it? Huh? Of course, to produce a VBF. If it was UVF, that's a different matter altogether. But to produce a VBF, which is what they said at cystoscopy, then this must be low down, which means that you would have could have had difficulty in exposure. Okay? Exposure would have been difficult and the exposure would have been compromised in a patient like this and therefore she has been injured. So the injury was recognized. Obviously there was an injury to have re-implanted the left ureter. Is that right? <coughs> so when, why you, you unless a childhood she had had something done? Left a new ureteric orifice seen near the dome. It's very clearly written there. Unless there is a reflux in childhood and that was re implanted or what, I don't know. They have said Neo is the mistake or is it right? Mm -hmm. No, it's my mistake, sir. Oh, I see. Near the dome, they have said Neo ureteric orifice seen near the dome. Yeah. That is also a mistake, no? Yes, sir. It's only 0.5 cm of the circular opening there, 2 cm of the side. Oh, all the and other thing is wrong. <laughs> right, so we are just talking to our head. So, both the urinary bodies. So, now what do you do? They put a guide wire through it, it is coming out through the vagina in the area where they said that the previous opening was from where urine was leaked. Isn't it? So, are you happy now to operate on the patient? Or you do Imaging. So, do you think an ultrasound is 
This question will be asked in the exam. It all depends on how you answer the exam. Ultrasound is useful. Madam wants to know, is it useful? It is useful. It is useful. It will show you whether there is a collection. It will show you whether there is evidence of edema around the kidney, if there is polynephritis. It will show you if there is hydronephrosis, hydrouretal. Alright? So, it is a very useful test. You can't throw it away and say useless. It is useful. It has its own limitations. That's all. But if you are right. pushed to the wall, if you don't have IV, you don't have CT, you have got some peripheral hospital, you got a cystoscope, you got an X-ray machine, you can assess the unit by doing a retrograde. And this will tell you, okay, kidney looks all right, kidney function looks all right, the corticometallic differentiation looks good, the unit is there, collection there, go ahead. So you can still get away. You can still get away. So it is useful, but you will tell the examiner, sir, I would like to do a functional test. Nobody can tell you no. Nobody can fail you for making that statement. They just want to needle you and find out whether you are sticking to your guns. That's all. So by answering the examiner, sir, you are helping him. You are keeping his ego up. Yes, sir, it's a very useful test. However, I would like to do this. They even quote medical legal reasons. Yeah, you so tomorrow the patient can go for court and yeah. you should be very clear in what's that. I want to know the kidney may first stop functioning, kidney may be poorly functioning. So I want to know the functional assessment of this kidney. I don't know for how long the kidney has been obstructed. All those things. So you understand the question? And how you'll answer? Is it useful? Yes. But I will do this. Right. What was that? What was that? Some previous opener. Sujata, I'm just going to the OPD. Hello, Sujata? Hi, I'm sorry. I'll carry on to the OPD. Yes, I'm going to the opener. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we are assuming it is only the way, so it is open surgery, open. Any other? Uh, if at all it is very near to the urinary cortex, may require urinary being surgery. No, but we are telling you, na, it is 2 centimeters above the trigger, then how can it be near like urinary? Yeah. And then uh, only uh, for uh, another is the vaginal approach. Okay, vaginal approach, abdominal approach, any other approach, any other surgery? Oh, this two want to answer? Laparoscopy. Laparoscopy what? Laparoscopic open surgery or something different is done in laparoscopy? Is the surgery same done in open and laparoscopy? In open also, there are two three methods in which you can approach the paratrigonal tissue. What are they? Bival may not be done. Bival is after that. Bival is done in which surgery? What is the name of it? Open. What is the other surgery?